Hey everyone, Scott here, and today we're looking at some really old Bible software. Uh, specifically, we're going to look at Logos 1.6 from 1994, that's 30 years ago. Uh, I came across some old software which I'd posted um, at a thrift store and it just got me thinking and I thought, well, let's, let's go ahead and dig this out. My mom bought this years ago when we got our first computer and it's been a long time since I looked at it. So there's a few different things here. We won't look at every little thing. This is just kind of for fun, but let's get into Logos. And uh, if you use Logos and you're used to the uh, the new versions and all the features and everything, this is going to be just kind of mind-blowing, I think. Uh, it's very simple. Uh, so we see here we're in Genesis 1.1. We're in the uh, ASV, which is kind of an interesting choice, not a real common translation. And uh, it's currently in a line by line. We can do paragraph. Yep, there we go. So that's kind of a nice feature. And we can scroll through. And it's really weird not having a scroll wheel work on my mouse, but Windows 3.1 does not support that, which is what this is running on. If you have not used a, an older computer, didn't grow up with this like I did, this may look very foreign. Okay, and we see there's Jehovah God, very ASV. So let's try the King James Version, which is going to feel a bit more familiar to uh, a lot of us. Now it says Lord God. So I think we can just type, uh, if we want to go to like Matthew 1, there we go. And just scroll through. Now I think you can do, I think this one up here, yeah, this will take you through to different chapters. I think we can do red letter. Let's see for those who like that. There we go, red letter. Obviously a lot of red letter in Matthew 5. And then I think this scroll here will go to the next book. Yeah, so there's Mark. We can go back to Matthew. On to Luke. There's a few extras in this. It has Knave's Topical Bible. Strong's Lexicon isn't... Um, enabled because it, I guess it didn't come with this particular package. It could be added on. You can have the Strong's numbers displayed like that, but they don't do anything. I'm guessing if you have Strong's installed, clicking on those would take you to the entry. Not sure, but whoops. Uh, let's turn Strong's off. They have translator notes for the King James Version, which is nice. I uh, don't know if there's any here in Luke. Um, okay, here's some translator notes. So I don't like that they're in line. It would be nice if they were like in a margin, but that's how it works in this old um, version. So I'll go ahead and turn those off again. It has cross references, but it doesn't do anything. So I don't know if it's because I don't have any installed. Not sure. To oops, view topical index. Hmm. Yeah, I'm just I'm, like I say, I'm not real familiar with this version, and I I haven't looked at it in years. I didn't use it that much as a kid. Um. I know Bible Atlas doesn't work, so I don't have it. Let's try clicking on Naves. Here we go. We can type in a topic. Oh, let's type in I don't know Moses to see what that does. Select. And there's a little information about Moses with references throughout. And I assume if I click on one of these references, maybe double click? Double click. There we go. That takes me to Exodus 5.1. Okay. Um, I guess probably enough of that. There, I don't know. There's a whole lot else here to show. Like I say, it's very simple. There's not a lot here. And 
Um, you can add more to it, but that's that's all I have in here. And close Logos. Um, one minute Bible. That's uh, it's just like a little devotional thing. So it comes up and it's got a reading. So here's a reading from the 24th chapter of Joshua. And I don't, I'm sure that yeah, there's some different things you can do. I'm not real familiar with this. So anyways, I guess I can highlight. Let's take the green highlighter. Okay. It just kind of, oh, yeah, that's interesting. Okay, that would take some practice. Yeah, anyways. Do you want to save it? No, I like the giant red hand. I love those old school dialogue boxes and this. Actually, there's some good ones in here. In his time, this is like a Christian information planner. I'm not, I haven't really used it. I'm not sure. It's like a plan your day, get a scripture reading. I'm not sure. Um, that's a, that's a great one. I love Psalm 122 verse 1. Uh, what I do like in here is the dialogues are a lot of fun. Um, that one's great. I love the uh, construction sign. And then if we close this, um, we get this like, are you sure? Stop. Traffic light. Love it. I used to do that kind of stuff when I made programs in the old days. The Bible crosswords, that I did mess around with some. That was fun. Yeah, so here's the crossword program. So here's like 24 cross. If you blink my hair into your loom, that's going to be weave. So we can just W-E-A-V-E. -E. And then that might help us answer, what, 21 down? 21, there it goes. How awe-inspiring are your deeds? There we go. Oops. Oh, maybe I have to type the whole word or it won't accept it. Oh, that's interesting. It's kind of weird. Let's just explore that a bit. 21. Maybe if I click on it here. Okay. There we go. Alright. Uh, yeah, let's save it. Last thing I wanted to look at, just it is just kind of interesting to me. There's a README, which you always had those with software back in the day. This did come on a CD-ROM, not floppy disks. But I like down here, you see they have, um, they have all this information. And then they have their contact information. No website address, no email. This is pre-internet days. Uh, just here's all the phone numbers, the fax, US, Australia. And then they've got a list of their offerings because there's no website to go to, right? So, and they tell you it changes, call for the latest updates. And so you can uh, add some, add naves or some uh, Hebrew and Greek resources. Here's all the translations they offer. Looks like you know, I didn't check, but I'm pretty sure they don't have the Apocrypha in there with the King James, only with an NRSV, so I think they'd have it with the RSV, but, huh. Anyways, some foreign language Bibles available, and then some uh, biblical languages, and of course the crosswords we just looked at, which, oh, it came with a font. I guess I could use that in, in uh, WordPad. All right, anyways, that's it. I thought uh, maybe some of you might enjoy this little trip, little nostalgia trip with me. I uh, Now, I'm not going to get into how, like, how you set this up. I know someone's going to ask, how do you install this? How would you get it going? It's That's outside the scope of the video. I'm running Windows 3.11 on uh, its DOSBox emulator on a Raspberry Pi. There's, there's some videos, tutorials out there. Um, if you're like an IT type or a tinkerer, it's not, not too hard. 
I'll maybe I'll put a link to one of the videos I watched that uh, discussed how to do that. But yeah, anyways, um, have you used the old versions of Lagos or any other old Bible software, or are you or just remember the old Windows like this? Tell me about it in the comments. I'd love to hear about it. As always, I thank you for watching. God bless, and we'll see you for the next video, friends.